All right, so we're going to check out Activision Classics compilation. This one has 30 games on it, so see what it's all about. And it is again the PlayStation PS Classic that I'm playing on through my little HDMI capture card they picked up on eBay for less than $20. And the game box that soft mods the PS Classic was also, I believe, about $20. So Activision is, um, is that what I said it was? Activision and Television? But basically, they're like our uh, Atari quality. So it's giving you a preview here of what's on there. Don't know that we'll play all 30. Maybe. Yeah, Activision Classics. Okay, so these are Atari 2600 games. It says it right there. I wasn't sure. Um, so, we'll play a few and just uh, see what this compilation disc is all about. I don't think I've already done this one. But the Blast sticks that I have um, are similar to this. Atlantis, Barnstorming, Boxing, like an Overhead Boxing, Chopper Command, and the Atari 2600, I tell you what. Cosmic Computer, I'm sorry, commuter. <laughs> Cosmic commuter. Crackpots. Dolphin. That's weird looking. Precursor to Echo the Dolphin, maybe. <laughs> Dragster. Oh, that's interesting. Just go through all the ones on here and then we'll pick a few maybe to play. Enduro. Looks like another racing one. Fishing Derby. So the, like the Wii fishing <laughs> to come many years later. Freeway. It's like Frogger. You're like a chicken or something. Interesting. Frostbite. Grand Prix. Some of these I recognize and that are games that I've played on the 2600 as a kid and some I, I don't recognize at all. Hero. It's like a helicopter pack or something. Ice hockey. Two on two it looks like. Kaboom. Looks a lot like that Crackpots game. Keystone Capers. Yeah, some of these I don't think I could just pick up and play. They look a little complicated, even for Atari 2600. Laser Blast. Mega Mania. Looks like the Enterprise from Star Trek on that one. Kind of like the Galaxian ship, too, so pretty self-explanatory looking game there. Pitfall, everyone probably remembers Pitfall, one of, the, one of the first earliest games I probably played was Pitfall. Plaque Attack, You're supposed to get the hamburgers before they get the teeth with your little tube of toothpaste. River Raid. River Raid 2, so uh, 1942, 1943 
kind of a sea quest. Skiing. Sky Jinks. Spider Fighter. Stampede. Star Master. Kind of like the Star Wars arcade in a way. Like how it has Activision just right there on the screen the whole time. The threat of you forgetting who made it. Whose game it was. There's tennis. And then we're back to the beginning. So we'll start back up and pick. Pick a few to play through, see what they're all about. Go ahead and start with Atlantis. Atlantis, this is not one I've played before, so we'll see what it's about. I'm not sure which characters on the screen um, I even am. And let's play easy just because I've never played it before. Which will make me look really bad if I do poorly, but that's alright. So I am that. I'm the guns. That was interesting. That was Atlantis. You're the gun. Uh, let's play it one more time. Why don't I start over? You're the side or middle gun. And if you just push the shoot button, it shoots the middle one. And if you shoot, if you push left or right, then it shoots from that particular gun on that side. Oh, that blew up my middle gun really fast. Which I think is what happened last time. It took me a second to realize that that's what had happened. Oh, now my gun's back. Seventeen thousand nine hundred three. That's well. I mean, better than my first time through, but uh, for only ever having played it those two times, yeah, kind of an interesting game. Nothing, certainly nothing groundbreaking about it, but uh, all in all, wasn't bad. Pretty fun. Let's see what uh, else is on here. Uh, well, I know what else is on here. Let's see which one we want to play next. I have to go all the way back to the beginning. Holy web. Alright, so let's go down the list. Barnstorming. I think I played this one before. I actually think I had an Activision Classics for the Game Boy Advance. Um, I feel like I played Barnstorming on it, but not Atlantis. I don't think Atlantis was on there. 
So let's see what this one's all about. So I'm this airplane. Okay. And I think I'm supposed to fly through these. And avoid everything else. Trying to hit those birds. Oh boy. Uh, oh man. Yeah, the number of barns I have to go through is going down as I do it, so it seems like we're on the right track. Let's see if we can get through all of the required barns that I'm supposed to storm here. And then I'm guessing your score is based on the time it takes for you to complete that. Ooh, you can play it in black and white. Okay. I'm ready to go on. Doesn't seem to want to let me do anything else. Now uh, I see if I can beat that score. Minute nine or so. Should be doable. And I can't really move like forward or backward on the screen. Or go any faster. Doesn't seem like the button actually makes me do anything, so it's really just the joystick part of it. Oh boy. Yeah, well, hey, I beat my score there. And it looked like there were a few other um, ways you could play it, but I'm not too worried about trying the other modes. And I realized the last time I stopped this it only takes a second from here. Once you hit start it's right back to the collection of games so it's not a, a long wait or anything. Um, let's see what other one did I think looked interesting. Freeway. This is one that I thought looked like Frogger but I was curious if as the chicken you could actually move side to side and or just cross wherever you're at so check that out see how close to Frogger it actually is and it looks like you can only go up and down oh man yeah that's curious and I don't know if it's like a two player by default but you see it's given like scores up at the top one nothing two nothing Obviously, I'm not. I don't have a second player currently. Oh boy. So, yeah, it's quite similar to Frogger, only you can just go up and down. But the idea is the same curious which one came first, the chicken or the frog. I think it's supposed to be a chicken, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's like the why the chicken crossed the road kind of joke, probably, right? I don't know, does it just go on forever? Is it more fun with two players? Can you imagine being a, you know, what teenager or so age back in this, this time, this era, and spending, you know, what was a game then? 30, probably still 30 bucks or so. And this is what you, you know, you saved up your allowance or. Maybe you had a, a little part-time job or something, and you went and laid down your thirty dollars, and this is what you got. 
And that's fun for a little while, but yeah, like I say, maybe more fun with with a second player. Uh, you have the, the competition aspect of it, but yeah, it's funny to think about in a way. And it's kind of annoying it takes you all the way back out to the beginning, but it, it's obviously that's that's the only way you can do it because it starts me back highlighted over the game I just played, so it remembers at least that particular aspect of it. Grand Prix. So this one I had not played before. It looked kind of interesting. Um, it's cool how they have the different games and stuff. Uh, that was a big thing on Atari. The cartridges, boxes, and things would say, you know, 25 games or something like that. And then it would just be, I mean, essentially what we would refer to now as levels or whatever. But a lot of racing games. Always, always a lot of racing games, which. I actually enjoy playing racing games, but race, you know, we were talking about this the other day when the Super Bowl was on, and, you know, not everybody likes American football, and, and there's a lot of rules and stuff to understand it, you know, but uh, it's obviously very popular, and, and we like it here um, at my house, but I was talking about a, a sport that I really would have a hard time with, and that would be... Um, race car driving, like NASCAR, which is wildly popular, um, but I just, to me, is one that never really made sense. I'd really have a hard time, you know, playing much of it. See, now I thought it would let me pick a different level, at least when I did that. It's almost like to even pick a different level, you got to go all the way back out. So what's weird about these is when you get to like a logical kind of stopping point or the game ends, like, like it did with Barnstorming, um, it's a little bit confusing like how to restart it or get to where you're going again. So I guess the uh, premise here again would just be to beat your time. I don't remember what my time was last time. I think I'm doing much more poorly this round because I'm crashing a lot more, <laughs> but more harder to get up to speed. Alright, so that one was Grand Prix. And then see so you have the Options to, I don't know what they all do exactly, but see what else is on here to play. I'll just let it run. It's a little annoying. Okay, so that was Grand Prix Hero. Hello. I will fight for you, and I will win for you. This is an urgent message from the campaign to help elect President Trump. 20. As a loyal supporter, President Trump needs your urgent support to fund our brand new re-election campaign for 2020. Even if you contributed to help elect President Trump before in 2016, please contribute again so we can fund our campaign to get ahead and defeat the Democratic opponent in 2020. So please, press 1 to make even a modest contribution to re-elect President Trump in 2020. For your generous support, we'll send you a complimentary Trump 2020 campaign sticker as a way of saying thank you. Again, press 1 to make even a modest contribution to re-elect President Trump in 2020. Not today. Okay, let's see. Hero. Uh, I've never played this one, but I've seen it be played. Start on like one. I guess this is Activision Classics between each. Okay. How do I. Oh my goodness. Did I just kill myself? Okay. No, 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 no. Uh. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, we can go up, go up. Go up this way. Where do I go? Oh, I thought I was supposed to go down there, but I'm out of bombs. Yep, well, that's the way I was supposed to go. Woohoo! Alright, now we're getting the hang of this. Oh, maybe not. Can't see. That was weird. Oh wow. Blew myself out. Oh that was creepy. Hmm. Alright, well, so that was kinda interesting. Hero, another one I had never played before. Um, pretty fun. An interesting idea. So back out again. Wait for it to restart itself again. Pick maybe one or two more. Let's see what's ice hockey. This one looks kind of fun. It reminds me of. Um, Hat Trick, I think it was called. It's like an arcade game. I only ever really played it on like an emulator, like on name, but that one was pretty fun. You had a goalie and one goalie and one, uh, you know, forward or whatever. That was pretty fun. Mega Mania. This one looked kind of interesting. I just like the design of this starship here, and it looks like the Enterprise guided missiles. Or straight missiles. Let's see what guided missiles are all about. Let's see kind of how that goes. So, sort of in the vein of a lot of games from this era, but a little different in that the, the ships are sort of side scrolling. Are they dropping down after they get to the one side? Doesn't look like it. I thought maybe they were, but my eyes were too playing tricks on me there. But again, Space Invader. No, I think they are dropping down. Space Invaders. It's kind of like Space Invaders meets Galaga or Galaxian, more like Galaxian. Yeah, they definitely now they're really moving down. 
Holy cow. I mean, the design of the enemies isn't anything to write home about, but I like the little Starship Enterprise. Man, these guys move fast. I don't like to get down here in a hurry. But I guess that you can dodge them. And then they just probably start back up at the top. That's kind of cool. They, but they also shoot. Well, so that one's pretty fun. I wish it would just let me restart. Try it in black and white. Oh, so they're guided in that they move with me. Oh, that's pretty cool. I just finally figured that out. Haha, <laughs> okay. That's what guidedness is mean. So is that going to make me better now that I understand how to move them? I guess we'll find out. I like that though. That's a neat feature. I didn't realize that's what it was doing before. Doug. better before I realized that's what it was capable of doing, but... Huh, okay, so that was, was that Mega Mania? I mean, that one? Kind of interesting. I liked that one. I wish it was easier to get back to just the menu on that one, play, see how different it was with like straight missiles and that sort of thing. Pitfall has been kind of like played to death. Um, and I'm pretty sure on the other video, the blast video that I'll eventually someday finish, I think I played Pitfall on that one too. Um, this one looked interesting just because it reminded me of like 1942. in that type of uh, game, so we'll see how true that is once we actually play it here. Oh boy. Okay, that was interesting. How do I... okay. I'm holding the button down to stay like airborne. I don't know what happened if I didn't, but I fell in the ocean the first time off of the carrier there, so that can't be it, surely. Wow, it was. See, why does it do that? I don't understand why it keeps happening. So strange. Okay, so I guess you just have to keep it down to get off of the boat. And then you can kind of do your own thing, because I'm not holding it down anymore. I can just use the button to shoot. That's a relatively high level of difficulty, I felt like. Once you get out over the water, you can let up on the throttle. Through. You know, so a lot of games are pretty self-explanatory. Some of the nuances of some games would probably be, you know, nice to have the instruction manual for. But I don't know what those little things out there are all about. Um, those shiny things over the water, but. Not that critical to the. Let's see if we hit one. Oh, yeah, you can't hit them. <laughs> so that was River Raid 2. Let's find another one. So, Sea Quest. This one looked kind of interesting. You're in a submarine. I guess there's a guy out there swimming. I don't know, skiing. Sp 
spider fighter. I think that one looked like it might be kind of interesting. I'm guessing there's a ship at the bottom, so let's see what that one's all about. And that might be it for today. <sighs> it's Thursday. My day off. My day's off for Thursday and Friday currently. So nobody else is ever home. That's nobody else's days off. So that's the day I shoot these videos. And play, and play my games. So that's what we're doing today. It's the... What, six, seven, whatever the Thursday after Super Bowl was. I think it's the seven of February 2020. You get a lot of lives for one play. But they go fast. It's a fast moving game. But I enjoyed it. Oh, is that a different shot now? How's that? That's so weird. I wasn't shooting like that before. Was it? Maybe it was. The sound on this one is really soft. Get a little bit more volume here. There's just not really any music again. I felt like the others had background music, this one really doesn't. Just the little sound effects. This must be a new stage because the colors change and all things up. Top there changed too. I don't know what those are exactly. But you can kind of see with Activision sort of how a lot of their games, and it's true of every developer back you know back in the day, but follow kind of a real like similar you know, structure to, uh, this is a lot like that last one, the Mega Mania one in a way, but the, the enemies are, you know, they move differently, which is cool. Um, it seems like your little shot sort of follows your guy, almost like that guided missile setting on the, the last one, or on Mega Mania, I don't know if that was the last one I played for sure, but... Alright, well, so that was, what did we say that one was called? Spider Fighter? Let me go back and see, I think that's what it was. Probably be the last one we do for this particular disc of games. Activision Classics, collection of 30 games for the Atari 2600. For the PlayStation 1, played on PS Classic today. Mm, Spider Fighter, yes. So. Anyway, so that's a look at a few of the games, and uh, of course went through all the games um, available on this one. And uh, overall, pretty fun. Um, you know, obviously between the Atari uh, and and the arcade games that were based on Atari, or I'm sorry, probably the other way around. <laughs> uh, huge leap 
high-end quality graphics, gameplay, etc. Um, by the time we got to the Nintendo NES, which is really the machine that I uh, grew up on the most, spent the most time with uh, and on as a kid. Um, but you can see even as kind of basic as what the graphics say for, you know, something like Super Mario Brothers, or something like that, it was such a leap from the Atari and, and what the Atari 2600 was capable of, but when this was the only show in town, I mean, we were still blown away by it. It was, it was so much fun to be able to, you know, to even play games of this quality uh, in your own house. So, all right, well, that is that for this video. I'm probably still have a couple hours before anybody else gets home, so I'll probably shoot a few more, um, but I don't always publish them the same day or even the same week. Um, but if you see the same, you know, outfit, <laughs> it's likely that I shot them the same day. So, uh, whenever this one ends up getting published, it was again shot on February 6th, February 6th or 7th of 2020. It's a Thursday um, afternoon. So, anyway, I hope you had fun watching it. I did have fun playing it and uh, revisiting some of these classics of yesteryear. So. Thanks for spending some time with me again, and have a good day, whatever else you're doing today.